And international law enforcement agencies, including here in this country, have cracked a case involving one of the world's most prolific digital gangs. Lockbit has crippled targets globally and, according to the U.S. Department of Justice, collected more than $120 million in ransom payments from 2,000 victims. CTV's Montreal Bureau Chief Genevieve Beauchemin on the sweep and takedown of dozens of servers. International law enforcement mounted a hackback campaign, infiltrating the sprawling Lockbit ransomware gang. Investigators seized control of the group's site on the dark web. In addition to disrupting the Lockbit ransomware group at every level, we are also providing assistance and support to victims of the largest and most deployed ransomware variant around the world. Lockbit's targets have included hospitals, schools, global companies. Operatives snuck the ransomware into thousands of systems, snatching data and holding it hostage, collecting millions of dollars. They could say, hold on a second, if you don't pay me, I'm going to leak this data to the public. You're going to get regulatory fines, you're going to get lawsuits, loss of business trust. Canada first detected a lockbit infection within its borders in March 2020. By 2022, it was rampant, responsible for almost one out of four ransomware attacks in this country. Lockbit claimed responsibility for the February 2023 attack on the bookstore chain Indigo but also for taking data belonging to Toronto's Sick Kids Hospital during the 2022 holiday season. International law enforcement agencies say they have developed a key that could unlock the data belonging to several of Lockbit's victims. They also arrested two suspected operatives in Poland and Ukraine, and two Russian men have been indicted. There is always a digital trail, and we will find it. But finding that trail is one thing, ending the attacks is quite another. Groups like Lockbit often rebuild, rebrand, and find new ways of holding data for ransom. Omar. All right, Jen, thank you.